All right. Well, I'm Kathy Flanders. I'm an extension specialist here at Auburn University in the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. And today I want to talk about management of sorghum insect pests. Last month, Alana Jacobson did a good job talking about and giving an update on the sugarcane aphid, but I just wanted to provide a further update in terms of what we're seeing out in the field as far as sugarcane aphid goes, because that is our biggest problem right now and our biggest key pest is this new, new sugarcane aphid. Um, I'm happy to say that the populations uh, that I'm seeing out are building up on Johnson grass right now, and but they're not as large as they were last year. So that 2016 picture over there, I haven't seen anything like that yet. Um, about 20% of the Johnson grass that I've been looking at in central Alabama is infested uh, this year as opposed to 30% last year, and the number of aphids per plant is much lower. So I'm pleased about that. Uh, we still have to worry uh, in, in thinking about um, managing sugarcane aphid and do everything we can to avoid having to spray, but unfortunately it, it seems to be almost inevitable that we have to scout and, and spray for this pest. But the best things to do are to pick the tolerant variety, use the seed treatment, plant early, scout early and often, and apply an insecticide on threshold. And our best guess for a threshold is if we see about 50 aphids per leaf, if we look at an upper leaf and a, a, a middle leaf and an upper leaf and, and we see 50 aphids per leaf on 20 to 25 percent of the plants, um, then we would consider that that would be uh, time to spray. You need to know what insecticides are legal and effective for sugarcane aphid and this year is um, Savanto and, and then Transform. We were able to get a Section 18 label so we can use Transform on uh, grain sorghum mm -hmm. and forage sorghum. Um, use a high volume of water uh, and protect your beneficials, so avoid using the broad spectrum insecticides. So this is key when we're talking about managing these other pests that we have in the system, is that we have to um, avoid broad spectrum insecticides that are gonna kill natural enemies and flare our aphids. So we wanna go ahead and um, keep the aphids out of the heads and is, is a main goal. And so another thing that we can encourage you to do is go ahead and get the Alabama Crops app or subscribe to the Alabama IPM newsletter because if we have updates about what's going on as we're seeing some issues with this or other pests, we will get it out in those, in those venues. So moving on to all the other pests that we used to have. Um, we didn't have a lot of sorghum before a few years back when the price was uh, was good and we suddenly had a lot more, more sorghum than we'd had in years and people had kind of forgotten how many different insect pests get on sorghum in the southeast. So it's not just one, there's a whole complex of different kinds of things that we that, that get on the, uh, the crop. Uh, this slide, uh, courtesy of uh, Dr. Glenn Studebaker in Arkansas, is just sort of showing you some of the other pests that you can have in addition to is sugarcane aphid. So there are other aphids out there. Yellow sugarcane aphid can be a problem, and I've seen quite a lot of that on Johnson grass this year. Fire ants, chinch bugs, world feeders, different kinds of borers, and a whole plethora of things that feed on the head, including um, the sorghum midge, and then a bunch of these caterpillars, corn earworm, fall army worm, sorghum webworm. There's a looper out there sometimes too, and then also some uh, stink bug problems. So I want to point out that for in terms of management thresholds and management tactics for these other sorghum pests, there's an excellent publication uh, called Grain Sorghum Insect Pests and Their Management by Dr. Uh, David Bunton from the University of Georgia. So you can, um, can uh, Google that or in, and find that and the link is listed there at the bottom of the screen. Now, a neonicotinoid seed treatment is going to take care of most of that early season insect pests. So it's not only going to help you greatly with sugarcane aphid, but it's going to help you against a lot of those things that are in the soil or around causing problems. Most of it, it, on grain sorghum, we find that all three of these materials are very effective. Um, so it depends on what you can get on the, uh, the hybrid that you're buying from your seed dealer. Uh, imidacloprid, clothianidin, or thiamethoxam. Um, that would be the either the main trade names would be gaucho, poncho, and 
Cruiser, respectively. Uh, those materials uh, seem to be doing um, do do a very good job, and it, or recommended that your your seed be uh, have a seed treatment on it. Then we want to start thinking about all the different kinds of factors that are going to increase our risk from insects, and we want to do the exact opposite. So late planting is going to be like. Austin was talking about earlier with the diseases. Uh, the later you plant, the greater the risk you're going to have from a lot of these um, different kinds of insects on, on, on grain sorghum. So planting late, we're increasing our risk from almost all of our pests, as you can see that long list there. Um, double cropping behind cereal, we get higher risk from all those pests, plus chinch bugs. Double cropping behind um, uh, the winter cover crops, again, we're going to have a lot of problems from these pests. Continuous sorghum, we add in a few other issues. We're going to have problems from, uh, we could have problems from bill bugs, sorghum midge, and possibly from sugar cane aphid. And um, the dry weather, if we have dry weather, we're going to have problems and see problems with grasshoppers, lesser cornstalk borer, fall army worm, and chinch bugs. Now, ironically, it was dry earlier this year, so I know people that planted corn and had problems with lesser cornstalk borer this year down in southwest Alabama. So wherever it's been dry, uh, we, we could see some problems from these other pests. Hopefully all this rain we've had recently is going to decrease the chances that we are going to, that we're going to have problems. Um, but we can't do anything about the weather, but we can certainly control how and when we plant our grain sorghum. And so generally, later planted grain sorghum, while it may fit into some of the crop rotations, is going to be at the highest risk, and, and it's better to plant it um, at earlier in that recommended uh, planting uh, window for grain sorghum, in terms of insects anyway. So going on, again, other things that are going to increase the risk from these insects, reduce tillage, minimum tillage things, uh, strip till, a uh, bunch of these soil insects in the mix, um, as well as some of the sugarcane, southwestern and European uh, corn borers in different parts of the states. We have different problems with those different borers. Uh, planting into sod or newly tilled ground, uh, cutworms, we worry about sugarcane beetles and grubs. Uh, planting into burnt cereal stubble or conventional tillage on a light soil, if it's hot and dry, again, I mentioned that lesser corn stock borer. And proximity to Johnson grass is a big thing because it is a sorghum species and it lets things build up like yellow sugar cane aphid um, and uh, a sorghum midge. So as I mentioned, controlling these other insects in our grain sorghum is complicated by the sugar cane aphids because any of the broad spectrum insecticides such as those pyrethroids are going to kill those natural enemies. Without the natural enemies, these sugar cane aphids will be worse. So again, we want to try to avoid spraying the pyrethroids and other broad spectrum insecticides such as uh, Lorisban um, and some of the other ones, if at all possible. So let's go through and kind of talk about some of the things that we can scout and spray for. Uh, a lot of those insects, the soil insects and things, we need to rely on a seed treatment to help control it. Uh, we can scout and spray for the um, headworms if we have a problem with them as uh, well as what we call the world worms. They're basically the same same insects, the coronia worm, the fall army worm, and the, the sorghum webworm are generally going to be the ones that we have trouble with. So if we have them, if we find them, we're going to want to use something that's easy on the beneficial insects. And in this case, I would choose Brevathon, Blackhawk, or Diamond. Um, again, avoiding those broad spectrum insecticides. So our threshold um, is um, two or more uh, larvae of the coronary worm and the fall army worm per head, or for the webworms, so if we have four or more of the webworms um, per head are found. Um, the other thing that we have to worry about, and people have kind of forgotten about because we hadn't grown grain sorghum for a while, is this sorghum midge. And um, this slide is showing the sorghum midge adult. It's a little fly uh, that goes out there and she lays her eggs um, right there on those flowers and causes problems. Here are some, here are some midge adults that are trapped in the, in the spider web. You can see how small they are relative to the uh, grain sorghum head there. Here are the little larvae. Um, 
And here are the little, um, if you look at the little silvery colored things, those are actually the pupil skins where they have bolted from one stage to another um, right there on that, on that sorghum head. So if you get a lot of midges, you get very poor, poor uh, seed set. So how are we gonna control it? We've already talked about some of this stuff. We're gonna plant early, rotate our crops, control our Johnson grass, and if possible, plowing is a good thing from an insect point of view to bury those overwintering larvae. Some people don't have a lot of problems with sorghum midge and other people have a problem, sort of a chronic problem. And uh, so it also, what, how many of these tactics you need to employ sort of depends on sort of what your history is with, with sorghum midge if you know it. So the only way to control it is to control, if we're gonna use an insecticide, is to control the egg laying adults. And so obviously the timing's gotta be critical. We gotta put the spray out at a time when, the, when these adults are out flying around because they're not feeding and they're not gonna be coming into contact with these insecticide otherwise, so we have to be putting our insecticide on when they're out there. It's important to understand that the biology of this insect is that these adults mature in the morning and they're out there in the morning, so we need to sample and spray in the morning. So in terms of sampling fields, it's uh, recommended to start when the plants reach 20% bloom and sample every few days and stop when the plants reach 90% bloom. So inspect the sorghum panicles for the adults. Look, it's important to, Dr. Button recommends that you sample at least 20 sorghum heads for each eight acres of field that you have. So obviously it takes a lot, quite a while to sample and you, you, know, you can't sample everything, but that's sort of a recommendation to make sure that you're getting a representative understanding of what's out there in the field. So you can either look for these adults or you can shake those adults into a plastic bag and then um, look for the midges in the bag. Our threshold is, is if we find one uh, sorghum midge fly per panicle when 20 to 30 percent of the panicles are in bloom. Now it's important to spray immediately after, after scouting and not delaying because you you don't know uh, if you wait what's going to be out there on another on another day or in the afternoon. So when you find them, get out there and spray. Check that field again within a few days to verify that control. And if necessary, you might need to put on a second application uh, five to ten days later uh, that might be needed for some effective control. So choices for if a midge spray is necessary. I mean, if you absolutely have to. Um, you might just have to break down and use a pyrethroid, but um, Lorisban Advance is reasonably effective, although it is a broad spectrum insecticide. Blackhawk, which is a spinosad product, has a section 2EE label to use on sorghum midge, although not all insecticide tests have been consistent about how it performs. Uh, Lanate is another broad spectrum insecticide, but we mention it because it tends to have a very short residual, so it sprays what is there. And uh, so it might have a little bit less of, a, of a, a risk to some of our other beneficials if those beneficials happen to not be in the field during the spray. So our choices aren't great for sorghum midge. And we may end up disrupting our sugarcane aphid control if we have to spray. So it's also important to keep on scouting these fields and uh, for any other insect pests that might develop even after we control our sorghum midge. That's sort of a whirlwind tour through uh, the grain sorghum pests. Um, some information on managing the pests that I try to include some thresholds and some information and uh, the current insecticides that we have for use is so you can be found in the uh, 2017 IPM guide for Alabama. And if you go to alabamacrops.com and click on the IPM uh, section, I think it's actually the top link on the left, uh, it will take you to a section where you can, can find this guide. 